This is Griffith's Electrodynamics, problem 5.9. We are going to be finding the magnetic field um, produced at this point, uh, P. And uh, by this uh, current configuration. So what we've got here is a quarter of a circle. All right, and the current comes around this way at a radius of B. And then it travels straight in towards P. Um, down to this radius of A where it follows another semi or a quarter circle out to, to this point and then travels out again. So we're going to use the Biot-Savart law for this and uh, you know, pretty much uh, what we can do is just find the magnetic field uh, produced by let's just say um, say the inner um, quarter circle right here, and then we'll, uh, we'll just get a minus sign when we find it for the outer one. So we'll just put a minus sign in there, change the A's to B's, and we'll be good. Uh, these, um, these legs out here, the connections between the two, don't cause any uh, field at P, because you see they're directed straight at it. So uh, this cross product here in the Bios of our law will give zero for them. All right, so real quick, we'll just look at this. Um, so again, we're looking only at this inner arc um, at radius A first. Um, so let's see, so our DL prime, okay, uh, that's going to be, we're using cylindrical coordinates. Uh, we're out at a radius A, so that's a radius, sorry, that's an A, D, B or dp prime, I guess, or whatever. All right, what is um, in the, our cylindrical coordinates, what is r hat? Well, r hat is the unit vector in the direction from the current to, or from the little current segment to the point where we're measuring, from the source to the field point. So let's just say I'm looking at this little piece right here that is pointed directly at P, which uh, if P is our origin, that is just an S hat, except pointed towards the origin, so that's a minus S hat. All right, using cylindrical coordinates as, as Griffiths uh, defines them with S's instead of R's and stuff. All right, <coughs> and what is the magnitude of the separation vector down here? This cursive R itself. Uh, that's just the distance from the source point to the field point, which is, in this case is A, because that's the radius from um, this arc to the center. All right, so let's write out our little integral again. I'm going to put a subscript A on here to remind us that's the part we're working with. We've got a mu naught over 4 pi. We have an I, and now, oh, excuse me, uh, this is a vector, right? So this needs a phi hat on it, right? Phi being defined according to the right-hand rule if, um, yeah, we're just going around this way. So it's a positive phi hat, all right? And let's just say Z hat is coming out of the page, all right, coming at you. Um, again, in our right-handed coordinate system. All right, we got that out of the way. So we have um, this A uh, D phi prime, all right? And then we have this phi hat from this crossed into our R hat, which is a minus S hat. Okay, it's kind of awkward to write. We'll clean it up in a minute. And then on the bottom we have r squared, and r is just a, so that's an a squared. Okay, so mu naught i over 4 pi. We have uh, 1 over a left. And then we are integrating. We just have this d phi uh, from 0 to pi halves. Is that right? Yeah, pi halves. Okay, because that's where our 
arc ends here by halves. Now we just have to figure out the direction. So we have phi cross into a minus s. So phi is going this way around the circle. So if we pick a, a point for phi, say going this way, and minus s is going uh, directly towards the origin. So this way, crossed into this way, by the right hand rule that points upward. So that is in the z hat direction. So this is a nice easy <laughs> integral, just gives us pi halves, right? So again, we're looking at BA, u naught i over 4 pi a, we have our pi halves from this integral, and then we have uh, the z hat direction, again for just this a part. Uh, we will go ahead and get rid of that, we can take this 2 and combine it with this 4 to make an 8. u naught i over 8a z hat. Alright, so like we talked about before, uh, to get the b, we just take this a and change it to a b, but because the current's going in the other direction, we'll get a minus sign. So, minus this answer, u naught I with a B instead of an A, Z hat. All right, so the magnetic field from the outer piece is going in the other direction. But it's a little bit weaker, right, because B is larger than A, B is on the bottom. So to get the total, again, these legs don't uh, count for anything, right? They're pointed, they're oriented straight at or away from the point we're measuring the field. I'll just call this B total or something, okay? Um, we can factor out a mu naught i over 8. All we're doing is adding these two together, right? So we have a 1 over a left from the first one, and then this minus sign and a 1 over b. And in the z hat direction. And this is our magnetic field from this first uh, current uh, configuration that uh, Griffiths gives us. All right, let's set that aside for a sec. Because now we're moving on to the second part, all right, which is this configuration. We have two infinitely long wires, all right. Current is coming in uh, straight along this. When it hits <coughs> this point, um, sorry, here's our point P. This is where we're measuring the field, all right, from this uh, current configuration. Comes in here, it travels around this semicircle right here, and then goes out infinitely far away again. So um, let's do the semicircle part first, right? Um, how is it going to be pointing? Well, at point P, if we use the right-hand rule, the current is curving around in this direction. So our thumb points into the page, and uh, B will be pointing into the page. So if we call Z hat uh, pointing out of the page again, just for consistency or whatever, um, then uh, we'll get minus Z hat for our direction of our magnetic field. So let's go back and copy our Biosavar law again. Okay, so let me just write semicircle. It looks like an E as a C. Okay, so we're looking at this semicircle. All right, so B, it's just going to be like the similar, just what we did uh, previously, right? Um, We have a mu naught, we have a uh, 4 pi, we have an i, and then um, what is uh, dl? Hmm. Well, 
in this case, the i is going around uh, in the minus phi hat direction. All right, maybe, maybe it would have been better if we drew all the arrows the opposite way. I don't know. Um, so a minus s d phi uh, phi hat minus sign because we're going the other way around. Uh, our r hat again is pointed straight towards the origin, which is a minus s hat. And then our r is just big R, right? This cursive R is equal to big R. OK, so let's put this in our integral now. We are integrating. We um, Let's just call this from 0 to pi, OK? Let's maybe just start our, our uh, angle right here and go all the way around. So 0 to pi. Uh, we'll have this R squared on the bottom. Um, we have a, oh, yeah, this s right here um, in this little differential, because we are integrating out at this radius r, that is actually going to be a big R. So we have a minus r d phi, or d phi prime, whatever. Um, and then we had our phi hat from this one and we're crossing it into this, crossed into minus s hat. Uh, OK, so we already have this minus sign out here. Um, so if phi, if, so for plus phi hat, that's going around this way. So this, oh, my right hand's going to get all messed up. So let's just tip it this way. So phi hat's going this way, crossed into minus s. So this crossed into this gives us c hat, which is what we found before, right? Um, OK, let's just write this out. So we have a minus mu naught over 4 pi. We have an i. Uh, OK, we got this minus sign out already. We need uh, one r down on the bottom. We need a pi from our integral of d phi, and then we need a z hat from this cross product. Pi z hat. And of course, this and this uh, can cancel. OK. So um, let me write this up here real quick just to have a place to go to. Nice answer. Uh, minus mu naught i over 4 r z hat. OK, does that make sense with our right hand rule? Um, if the current's going this way, right, the thumb's pointing into the page, and we should get a minus sign on this. So that looks good. All right, so now we're moving on to uh, this uh, piece right here. And notice, uh, because this is going this way and the one up here is going the other way, they are going to add to the field the same way, all right? Pointing into the page, right? By the right hand rule as we come around, it points into the page. And um, by symmetry, right, they're symmetric, basically. They, if, if we find the answer for one of these, we just double it and get the answer for the other one. So this is um, an identical problem, basically, to say we were finding, if you look at back in problem 2.3 or whatever it was, um, you're finding the, the field due to a segment of line charge, except where, ex of course, this is not a segment. It extends to infinity. Um, so there's a, several different ways we could do this. Um, you know, we could just treat this as an integral of a point next to an infinite line, uh, all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Since that's double of one of these, that gives us the answer for both of them. Uh, I'm just going to show the integration for, for uh, just doing one of these, I think, anyway. So 
Uh, right, our BOS of R law. Switch to a darker marker. It might be a little thinner, though. It might be hard to see. Ah, it's alright. Oops, that's it. Ah, goodness. Okay. Um, so what we're looking at here is a point P, some distance R. Okay, and here is going to be our little X prime source point, right? and we'll be integrating uh, from this point all the way out to infinity. Um, there's, yeah, let me, let me see if I can find a better way to do this real quick, because anyway, the way, the way I'm going, I was thinking of doing it is um, just the way we did it in the previous problem 2.3 or whatever that was, where um, anyway, we, we make a trig substitution and we end up putting the integral in terms of this angle theta. Um, so it's probably cleaner if we just start by integrating using theta. So let me see if I can work that out real quick. All right, so yeah, there is a fancier way to do this. If you can see it in Griffith's example 5.5, if you're interested, but it's um, kind of trigonomic, trigonometrically denser, I think, than the way I was going to do it, so I'm just going to do it the way I was going to do it, um, which is just a trig substitution. All right, so I've already laid out a few of the, the pieces here. Um, so we have our little uh, segment right here, uh, dx prime, right? <coughs> um, the right, and it's uh, the current was going in this other direction. Let me write that in real quick. So that's where we get this minus sign, minus sign from, the minus x hat direction for our little piece of current. Uh, this r vector is going from here to here. All right, so it's a minus x prime in the x hat direction, or it's an x prime in the minus x hat direction, and then r up in the y direction. Let me write this in real quick. that y hat. And then just using Pythagorean theorem, we have uh, x prime squared plus r squared is equal to this piece right here. All right, and when we do out this uh, cross product from the top of this integral here, um, all we get is an x cross y gives us a z, because uh, x cross x is going to give us zero. And then we have this minus uh, dx prime and this r. So writing out our new integral, mu naught over four pi, we have an i. Uh, by the way, this is going to be from zero to infinity when we're integrating over x prime. Um, the top part, <coughs> minus r dx prime, the z hat direction, and the bottom part was just uh, this r squared, so an x prime squared plus r squared. And already I can tell I made a mistake somewhere because I needed to, um, sorry, yeah, this um, needs to be divided by the magnitude of R right there, okay, to make this R hat vector really an R hat vector, right, yeah. Well, what, what I did here was cross this into this, but I, I need to divide by the magnitude to get an R hat. All right, so uh, when we do that, though, we get a three halves down here um, because there, it's this R cubed. 
Okay, so there's two powers here, plus this power here when we put that in, r cubed. So anyway, we're going to use a trig substitution on this. And just using this theta here. Okay. So our trig substitution is the same we used in problem 2.3, x equals r tangent of theta. And uh, dx, I guess I'll call these primes, right? Um, uh, we have an r and then uh, secant squared of theta, uh, d theta. So now, mu naught over 4 pi, we have an i, we have Um, we have, where am I, where am I, where am I, we have an r squared to the 3 halves power, which, okay, so I'm, I'm factoring that out of this, and then we have a 1 plus tangent squared of theta. Uh, again, to the 3 halves power. That's the bottom of our <laughs> integral. Kind of doing this in a weird way. But then we have a minus r up on top. And uh, then we had, right, that. Okay, now we're putting in our dx prime. Okay, dx prime is right here. So we have an r secant squared theta d theta. And now, uh, when we're looking at theta, we're not going from 0 to infinity. We're going from uh, this angle, which we'll still call 0, out to <laughs> pi halves. So there's our limits of integration. All right, so 1 plus tangent squared is equal by the Pythagorean theorem. That's equal to secant squared of theta. All right, we have an r squared on top, and we have an r cubed on the bottom. And we have this minus sign here, so 1 over r. And then uh, 3 halves power of secant squared is just secant cubed. And we have a secant squared on the top, so that's just a 1 over secant, which is just a cosine of theta from 0 to pi halves. And by the way, at this point, um, we haven't said anything about the angle, right? And you'll, you'll see this in um, Griffith's uh, example 5.5. I could put any angles in here. So this, this integral right here is also good for if we wanted to calculate uh, the field due to an infinite wire going both directions. We just go from minus pi halves to pi halves. Um, if you are interested in, say we had a segment of wire out here and the point's way over here, but there's, there's no wire here, we could also calculate that using these two different angles. Just put them in here, right? So that's an interesting, that's a good integral. Integral of cosine is just a sine. So we have, I'll bring this minus sign out, we've got a mu, mu naught i over 4 pi big R and um, sine of pi halves minus sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi halves is 1. So just a minus mu naught i over 4 pi R. All right, so this, oh, I lost my, um, I lost my uh, z hat vector. This is all uh, z hat. All right, does that make sense? Because um, when the current's going this way past the point, we expect it to be into the page, which was a minus z hat direction. So that does, uh, this answer does make sense. But we do need to double it, remember, because our we were only looking at half of the picture. We were only calculating for this one. 
Um, so let me write in here field due to the lines and we're just going to take this answer that we calculated for one of them and double it. So uh, minus mu naught i over 2 pi r. Okay, in the z hat direction. And so find a little piece of real estate I can write this on. I hope this is not too cluttered. Let me draw a little box right inside here, and we'll just write this in. So the total V at point P is just equal to the sum of these. So let's factor out our, our common parts here. Minus mu naught I. Uh, we have an R on the bottom. And then we have, what shall we do here? Um, factor out. Um, a 4, a factor out of 2, um, let's just, why not, let's just leave it as 1 fourth uh, plus 1 over 2 pi. You can probably reduce that down if you want. But, but here we go, this tiny little thing inside this box is the magnetic field at this point due to these two uh, wires that go off to infinity to the right, the current coming in, traveling around this half circle, and then heading back out to infinity.